discussing a very very important uh, aspect today and that is the in the under the talent analytics the meta analytics uh, we have to uh, understand unless and until we do not have the role of a researcher that is how to do the research uh, especially in the ales large enterprises however this is also applicable to the medium small and micro enterprises also talent analytics is everywhere applicable uh, but as naturally when there will be the large number of employees talented employees then this is becoming the uh, more uh, useful uh, otherwise the if there is a small group naturally you will make the individual observations and you will believe in those individual observations but when it is a multinational company or, and uh, large enterprises global companies so then definitely in that case um, how to do the talent analytics there will be thousands of employees how to identify the right candidate for the right job the succession planning of these uh, talent management or the acquisition of the talent management for the internal acquisition so recruitment in the new position so about meta analysis it is the criteria performing the meta analysis analysis then the hierarchy of evidence in the quantitative studies the steps involved in meta analysis and performance appraisal is there now what is the meta analysis meta analysis has been defined as a statistical analysis of a collection of analytical results for the purpose of integrating the findings so whatever the findings is there uh, then uh, first and foremost is this is the statistical analysis hmm? so statistical analysis means it is it is based on certain facts and figures and then it is a collection of analytical results whenever uh, we apply the statistical test on certain facts and figures then definitely we get certain results outcomes of those the application of test is there and uh, these collection of analytical results for the purpose of integrating the findings now what is integration of findings integration of findings means uh, we have collected a data maybe uh, to understand uh, any demographic variable and then we are applying the certain test so that it will be the statistical analysis and whatever the results we will get and we will interpret that is called the integrating the findings so meta analysis is a quantitative method of combining the results of independent research studies so whatever the independent research studies are there we we are going for those the uh, uh, collection of the uh, the um, from the literature review and these independent studies and then synthesizing this is important synthesizing conclusions synthesizing conclusion means that here when i say statistical analysis then the collection of the results results and then integrating and then synthesizing so these results which we have received and when we are integrating this the way we synthesize that is the intellectual input whatever we are integrating that is becoming the intellectual input is there and that intellectual input to evaluate the effectiveness of the treatments or procedures I, we will take certain examples also in this particular um, meta analysis process and then we want to make the what is what what is the solution or what we say practical implication the practical the effectiveness of the treatments of the procedures that will be becoming a very very important aspect so it is a way to calculate an average on basis of that synthesizing we will identifying that is the what are our findings in general are the average findings are there so meta analysis is the it is a statistical analysis it is a, a, a result it is the integration and it is the synthesizing the conclusions so therefore in that case 
it becomes very very important that is the how we are going to do, do the meta analysis for the purpose of uh, the talent analytics. It is used to identify sources of variation among such findings. So, naturally um, there might be certain similarities, certain dissimilarities. This is, there will be the variations will be there when appropriate to provide an overall measure. So, why we are doing this? We are doing this to identify a treatment, a solution, a particular implication for that particular problem which we are exploring and then that exploration of that particular solution for a particular problem that will be becoming the summary of our findings. Now, what are the different criteria of the performing the meta analysis? When more than one study has estimated an effect, already you know, there has been a fire, fire I thought that is the uh, there are certain relationship between the x and y. So, we can take an example that is the psychological ownership and the happiness. So, when one study is showing a relationship that is when we are having this psychological ownership and happiness. So, more than one study has estimated an effect. So, what is the effect? higher is the uh, higher is the psychological ownership higher is the happiness right when there are no differences in the study characteristics that are likely to substantially affect outcome and normally when there are different studies are done and then it has been observed there are no differences right so what happens that is whatever hypothesis assumption which you have created it proves right that is these characteristics are likely to substantially affect the outcome. So, this will be the substantially outcome will be there when the outcome has been measured in similar ways. So, therefore, these are these outputs will not necessarily will be measured in the similar way or dissimilar way, but a particular pattern of study has been adopted. So, therefore, that outcome will be measured in the similar ways. Uh, for example, uh, we are finding out uh, the regression uh, analysis for this particular uh, uh, relationship of the independent variable that is the psychological ownership with the dependent variable that is the happiness. So, how much is contribute in the happiness? So, the outcome has been measured in the similar ways. When the particular study has more than one research paper, so this particular topic may be being the more than one research paper that is uh, that is the when one study has already established and then further studies have been done. So, therefore, this has been the well established concept slowly and slowly it is making the best, uh, best uh, uh, application. Nowadays, then we talk about the inclusive leadership and talent stewardship. So, this talent uh, stewardship and towards the inclusive leadership then that particular study will be having the more and more uh, uh, in relationship and establish that yes there if the higher is a talent uh, stewardship which I have discussed with you in the previous sessions the, uh, that will affect the inclusive leadership is there. Mm. When an overall measure of efficacy of treatment or procedure is to be known. So, whenever an overall measures of uh, um, efficacy of treatment are there right uh, naturally uh, this will be the uh, solution for the happiness this will be the solution for the successful leadership inclusive leadership. So, this will create a measure of efficacy of the treatment of procedure right. So, this way so what is the criteria criteria is one 
study has been estimated. There are more than uh, one papers are there, research papers are there. They are likely to substantially affect the outcome that study is uh, making this particular uh, uh, relationship. And finally, we talk about efficacy of treatment or the procedure that is well known is there. Now, what is the hierarchy of the evidence in quantitative studies? So, first and foremost is uh, how it starts. It starts with the experts opinion. Whenever you meet the experienced people, so they are exper experts, the executives, when you meet the executives and experts, then uh, they will be giving their opinion and on basis of their experience, observations, they will say that yes, there is a, there is a study between the, these relationships of the independent variable to the dependent variable. Then case reports and case series are there and so they will share they will share certain uh, experiences and those experiences will be the case studies. So, whenever the experts uh, opinions are there and then they share as a case studies that that will be maybe the cross sectional study. Hmm? So, maybe on the basis of um, the um, uh, uh, geographically cross sectional study, maybe the nature of industries cross sectional studies will be there and uh, that, that will be identified it is the uh, how they are the coming from the different uh, or the um, contrast background uh, um, academically background. So, then in that case that can be the cross sectional studies will be there. Then case control study that is uh, keeping in mind uh, the certain uh, parameters, dimensions, the constant and then you are developing the certain case studies. So, that will call the case control study is there. Then there will be the cohort study is there. So, that cohort study that will be having these uh, the relationship between the different types of the uh, case studies or the data. Then there will be the uh, RCT and uh, if there is the, this type of this uh, uh, relationship is there, then we will identify by keeping this uh, cohort study and case control study uh, whether there, there is the uh, any relationship is research uh, is based is there or the literature review based is there and then meta analysis which we are talking today and finally, that will be the systematic review. Mm, that is the first slide which was talking about the synthesizing and if the synthesizing is there then that will be the findings. So, we will discuss in detail now this uh, hierarchy. So, steps involved in the meta analysis define the research question. Uh, so, here um, we can design a research question that is the uh, whether uh, happiness uh, whether the psychological ownership right that creates the happiness this will be the define the research question. So, we have, we have to identify uh, whether the psychological ownership uh, in the organization uh, does it create the happiness then the perform the literature search. So, we will refer the different journals. Now, here I will I will just like to mention that is the uh, there are certain um, benchmarking practices parameters right and then you have to see uh, that is the the source source of your literature and uh, that is uh, is being authenticated and well accepted in the academia. So, it does not mean that is if your, if your source is other than this particular databases then uh, it will not be acceptable. It will be acceptable, but it it has to be that particular impact factor. Impact factor those citations if it is there then definitely you will say that there is a literature search is there. Mm -hmm. uh, literature is well acceptable is there. So, normally we talk about the uh, this lit literature search mm -hmm. literature search is from this corpus uh, social science because we are from the HRM. So, that is a social science. Uh, so, SSCI uh, these uh, journals these are database Scopus, SSCI and ABDC Australian business Dean's Council hmm, that is also well uh, appreciated in academia 
and the SJR, the database from the Shimeogu Journal Research, SJR. So, uh, that uh, particular the, uh, the literature search will be done on this particular topic that is a psychological ownership and happiness, what type of the studies have been done. And uh, then we will find certain, uh, we, I, I will go through the some research papers also in later in subsequent sessions. So, uh, then we will go the select the studies. Now, how to select these studies? Actually, when we are designing this research question, we have to narrow down this research question. So, whether psychological ownership is the uh, in, is the um, uh, uh, the independent variable for the happiness as a dependent variable in where in uh, automobile industries but in automobile industries where in india in india in north india south india central india or in india so, when we have to select the studies, these studies uh, that has to be uh, uh, the relevant, relevant, the relevant studies. No? So, these, these studies will be relevant when they are related to the psychological ownership, they are related to the happiness, they are related to the automobile industries and they are, con they are the um, of the companies, company organizations in India. Uh, and now here, uh, not necessarily Indian organizations, please understand, it is the uh, organizations in India. So, therefore, the organizations from the Germany or Japan or Korea, so when those organizations are working in India, those automobile industries companies will be also will be the sample for this particular study. Uh, from these studies, whatever the studies are there, we will extract the data, relevant data and their findings related to this. And then, uh, then what we will do? Analyze the data, which we have seen in the previous slide, that is uh, analyzing the data and synthesizing the data results, synthesizing the results. So, this analysis of data, that is your meta-analysis and report the results that is the synthesizing is there. An individual's original work, right, because this is from where literature search, secondary data, we are taking from certain journals from the scopus, SSCI, ABDC or SJR, then studies, the studies are also from those journals. So, therefore, that is also a secondary data. Extract the data, the technology does. Hmm? like you are making the SPS use of SPSS or Excel or Tableau or dashboard and this we, we have uh, discussed and we will be seeing in further sessions also. So, extracting the data, then analyzing the data that is also by technology as I mentioned these all this technology, but then where is your work, where is my work, where is the originality, originality is to report the results. When we report the results, that will be the uh, involving the my contribution. What is your contribution? My contribution report the results, the synthesizing the results. Now, there uh, we are seeing the, uh, the another function of uh, HR in talent analytics that is the performance appraisal. Performance appraisal is frequently performed in organizations for the variety of purpose. So, for the talent management and analytics, hmm? then identifying the needs, right? If the in the HRM, uh, HRM we have studied that is how to identify the needs. Administrative decisions, that is the raise and promotion. Then the feedback and development, feedback and development of this particular uh, uh, process. Mm, of these uh, meta-analysis or the uh, that appraisal uh, performance appraisal which we have done for the employees, and then we tell them that where you are strong, where you are required to improve upon, and what potential do you have, what are your strengths, 
and where are the areas where you have to work more and the personal research is there, HR research will be done and uh, this, this way we identify new research areas. So, therefore, mm, this, this is becoming a very, very important uh, uh, research aspects uh, which we, we will talk about that is the how these, uh, uh, the HR is in emerging nowadays. Performance appraisals are among the most important human resource systems in organizations in so far as they are the represent the critical decision integral to a variety of human resource actions and outcomes are there. Naturally, um, when you identify the performance appraisal strengths, weaknesses of your employees, then you decide about that is what decisions are to be taken, resource actions are to be there. Because of its prevalence and importance in organizations of the appraisal system, performance appraisal is also one of the most widely research area in industrial organization psychology. So, you will find that is the there are number of research papers are there on this performance appraisal systems, performance appraisal rate, performance appraisal rate uh, that is the employee, that is the boss, that is uh, how they are doing this particular process. On the basis of this performance appraisal, we are going for the potential forecasting. Because as I mentioned, this performance appraisal will give us the strengths of the employee also. So, when we know the strengths, what we would like to do that uh, once we know the strength is that is this is a good analyst, mm -hmm. this is the good uh, synthesizer, this is also a very, very important. Right. So, one side the somebody may be only good synthesizer, synthesizing the results. Somebody will be having the potential for as an analyst, he is a good analyst is there. So, in the current fast evolving business environment, modern companies are under pressure to constantly improve their talent selection and development strategies that is the what they are going to develop the, uh, the uh, talent selection is to be there. So, naturally uh, every, every best company would like to have the best manpower. So, these is because of this uh, uh, competitive environment what companies are looking for? Companies want to improve their talent selection and uh, that is how to select the best talent, how to identify because there are so many applicants. But one should not throw the baby with bath water. So, therefore, it becomes important or under the pressure to constantly improve their talent selection and development strategies, not only the selection, once the acquisition is done, how to develop them for maintaining the competitive edge and supporting their long term business development goals. Organizations, long term business goals with the proper talent selection and proper talent development so that the company moves fast. High potential talents that is HIPOS are often regarded right as future leaders within the organizations. Naturally, those uh, uh, employees, those who are the uh, highly talented employees are there, then they will be the future leaders in the organization that we have to see. Compared to their peers, they have the leadership ability, business acumen that is to be a leader in the business and the desire for success and usually advance at a faster pace. So, uh, this talent selection and talent development. So, whenever we are talking about the talent, it means that they, that will have the leadership ability and if there is a leadership ability, uh, so definitely they will like to be the business acumen. And, but important is desire for success, right and usually advance at a faster pace that is uh, how they will be having the, fa the, the faster pace for the development. Given the significant role of the high potentials in the execution of the organizational strategy and the optimization of organizational structure. So, unless and until these high potential employees that is a talented employees, they will not going for the organizational strategies properly, then definitely that will not be the going to be the optimization of organization structure. So, talent might be there, but unless and until organizations will not go in the and create a strategy for that, that will not be you will not be able to identify the talent. There might be the uh, there may be the so many employees, but a strategy is required 
a, a focus is required and efforts is required by HR department and, and a, a process is required which will be creating through the organization structure. It is always a major concern in human resource management to prospectually identify and develop high potentials uh, especially among newly enrolled employees. Because those who are already working with you, so you know their potential, you know how their database you are having their appraisal reports. So, therefore, there is nothing like there will be something new. What is important is this, there is those who are newly, we are not, they are like a clean slate, but a very strong and effective slate. So, therefore, in that case, it will be becoming important. That is the how you are going for this particular uh, development of the talent. So, in human resource parents to especially identify and develop the high potentials newly um, uh, enrolled employees, so that special attention could be paid to cultivate the future leaders. So, dear friends, uh, that is the overall emphasis is the business growth and in the business growth from the thousands of employees, hundreds of employees, right, that high potential employees, if you delay what will happen? They will get trusted, they may leave the organization and later on you will come to know. I meet many executives by saying these things that is uh, this employee now who is working there as a such a high position with high responsibilities, uh, I never realized that is he is having so much of potential. So, why it was so? It was so because there was no organizational strategy. So, we have to create that organizational strategy to cultivate the future leaders. So, potential forecasting purpose and requirements are there, what type of the potential forecasting requirements are there. The purpose of the potential forecasting is to predict whether an employee is capable of taking on more demanding work like, like, like here is uh, that is the we, we say uh, the initiators who are the initiators. So, is uh, taking the more demanding work, hmm? he is uh, capable is capable of taking the more demanding work, what type of the work is, is given to them and therefore, they will like to see that is the yes, I want to do this particular work. So, this type of the employees, they are always, they will not hide, whenever they will be the responsible, they will not be feel happy, it is oh, I, uh, my boss asked me to do these things and I very smartly shifted this job to other one, because I am highly loaded, they will never say like this. Even if they are highly loaded, they will seek more, they will have the delegation of authority, they will have the decentralization, they will have the planning, they will have the organizing, they will have the controlling, they will have the coordinating, all functions of managers they will use management, right. But they will be the capable of taking the more demanding work and the speed at which he or she is capable of advancing and it is not like that that will take the work and then no, no delivery, no and the speed at which the she is capable of advancing and therefore, you will find that is the you uh, that is why in the organization you find a particular employee is present everywhere, because why? Because the management wants that employee, because he is contributing, he is delivering, right. So, th that, that, that is the identifying, but uh, then uh, what is the use of meta analysis? Meta analysis is making you faster to identify that employee. Otherwise, with the period of experience, earlier it was it done, the talent identification? Yes, earlier it was also done, but how it was done? With the experience, no statistical analysis, no data collection, no methodology, no, no meta analysis. But now it is the to inform the employees of their future prospects and therefore enable the enterprise to prepare a management succession plan. So, so uh, uh, future. So therefore, what happens as a result of which you select a successor because you are having as a strategy. So you know X is there, X will retire, X may go. So th then, who will take the charge of X? Why is there? Organization is stable. People come, people go, but it does not affect the growth of the organization. Modify and update the. Uh, management succession plan modify and update the training and recruitment programmers. Right. This advice um, implies what they must do to advance their career prospects. So, naturally, this type of implies what they will be looking for, well, they are looking for the career prospects. So, they want to make a growth faster. 
the objective thus of the potential forecasting system um, identifying the potential and forecasting the system to the uh, new new specially newly enrolled employees to help the top management make decisions regarding the suitable persons so matching the personality job fit for a particular job by generate by generating data about the employees who is good in what every employee is good every employee has certain potential there will be no employee who is not having the potential but who is having the what potential that is to be identified for performing the different and often higher level roles are there so that career prospects and higher level of roles uh, and that will be only possible whenever we are talking about this performance of the different types of the employees so meta analysis of the performance appraisal and potential forecasting is there and uh, now uh, exactly how it is done that i will discuss with you the process which i have talked in the performance appraisal number of papers are 41 uh, from the period of 1986 to 2018 performance appraisal and potential forecasting identifying the potential and then the forecasting the potential for the assigning the higher roles in future number of papers are 30 from 1987 to 2020 so how these interpretations of these papers have been done here we see this particular graph 1986 to 2018 the number of papers the number of papers they did here we will find they uh, how is increasing decreasing and this graph is there okay now this is one result how do you synthesize this result on the performance appraisals if this is the graph from these 86 to 2018 what do you interpret that synthesizing right that is your own capability talent identification here if i have given the chance i will explain about 2011 to 2014 that is the number of papers published in the 2011 to 2014 where the average uh, in average of these four years was the maximum number of papers that have been published in the performance appraisal right why this period has been taken 2011 to 2014 because 2008 2009 there there was the economic recession which went up to the 2000 early 2010 so therefore then question arises the main power utilization because during this period the bench management practice has also started what is the bench management practice bench management practice means uh, uh, the employee is not uh, uh, retrenched he is not uh, been uh, separated but he has been asked to sit on the bench and trained so that in future whenever there will be the employee requirement these employees will be used because they are highly potential employees so therefore in this year we will find that highly potential employees they have been uh, studied and then they have been retained and they have been given the higher responsibilities but before this and after this if you take the average of four years then you will find that is because of the 2011 and 14 rest of the average that will be very less so here is the point that is the how do you synthesize and what what you study the data based are used to explore the performance appraisal is between the year of 1986 to 2018 and then that was a context now i would like to take one more slide and in this slide we will talk about the performance appraisal in the performance appraisal of these different countries in the different countries here uh, the number of publications right and number of publications in the usa in the performance appraisal that is becoming the highest while when we are talking about the rest of the countries the number of the publications that has been becoming very small the research has been done very small so it means that in the first four countries i would like to take five countries we can take because the last three countries india 
in, in top in top 5 countries the last 3 countries the India, Australia and UK they are having the same number of research performance appraisal number of publications right. So, it means that that is in this study which these papers were selected it has been observed that is the the USA was highly concerned that is how to create that performance appraisal system. So, uh, we uh, here so we when we we combined these both the graphs right this figure shows number of publications in the context of the study. So, database of this potential forecasting the performance appraisal and potential forecasting again from the number of papers from 1987 to 2020 here it is a 2009, 2013, 2019 right that is becoming uh, the, uh, 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 the highest number of the papers are there. In 2009 it is becoming the, uh, uh, the uh, if we, we take uh, 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 I would like to take 2009, 2010 and 2011 3 years right and the 12. 13 and 14. If I will compare 9, 10, 11 with the 12, 13 and 14, the average will be 9, 10, 11 will be higher. So, again it has been that it has been started that is the, uh, the as I mentioned this performance in, in the years which are talking about they are talking about the economic recession 2008-2009 which is early into 2010. So, therefore, that identification of the employees who is doing uh, but this is not for the retrenching them separation or termination of their services no this is for the identifying that is uh, how the potential uh, employees are there between the year of 1990 to is there. When we talk about the context of the study in, in, in context to countries and then we find that is the it is the India is having the number of years the citation number of citations the per year. Hmm. Number of citations per year in the y axis that is the India is having the highest citations in the potential, uh, potential uh, forecasting that is uh, India is having the highest number of the citations are there. So, here India, USA, Malaysia and other countries we find. So, why, why it is so? So, interview the figure shows number of publications in the context of the study. So, all these aspects which we which will be talking about that is the how we are doing the analysis finding this data and making the analysis. The rest of these uh, interpretation uh, and application of meta, meta analysis that we will see in the next session. Thank you.